Hello and welcome to Really Scary, where we watch a, uh, a movie and tell you what we thought. We've watched a movie, babe. Yes, in fact we have. We have watched a movie. What movie do we watch? We watched Late Night with the Devil. Late Night with the Devil. Fucking fantastic movie. Absolutely. Oh my god. Amazing, amazing movie. So, this movie, it's... I didn't even realize it, but it is a found footage movie. Yeah, I didn't consider it found footage, and then we walked out, and my sister, who is a huge fan of found footage, said, I think that's the best found footage film I've ever seen. Yeah. So, this movie takes place in the late 70s. Uh, it is... It follows a story of a talk show host um, and uh, his kind of failing talk show. Uh, there's a bit of a narration in the beginning, which uh, your little sister did not care for. My little sister is Gen Z to the T, and she does not have a very long attention span, unfortunately. So, <laughs> And of course, this was all, the beginning intro was documentary style, so I think it just did not appeal to her. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it begins with with uh, with narration that uh, sets up the whole movie. Basically, like I said, there's this talk show host, and he's obsessed with becoming the number one talk show host in America. Um, but he's losing out to this to this other talk show, and he keeps getting super close to to to, to, to beating them out, but never does. Um, and uh, there was a bit of a, a thing there too, where his um, and this is getting into spoiler territory. Uh, his wife dies of cancer. Um, and he kind of disappears for, I think it was three years? Was it three years? It was a year. It was a year, okay. It, uh, he disappears for a year. Uh, and they also set up this this really thing, this really interesting thing where he's also part of this kind of, they kind of allude to it being a cult. It was like a secret society thing, you know, yeah. a real men's club yeah. type thing. Yeah, like, 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 uh, like the Freemasons or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but it, they definitely set it up with really culty vibes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it, it's, I think it's heavily implied that like he threw himself into the cult for a while. Um, or maybe he just... I, I, that's at least the feeling that I got. That's kind of the feeling. Um, what they said, I think, was that there were, had been rumors circling for his entire career about him being a part of this men's club. Yeah. And people asking what he did. You know, what what did you do in this club? What was going on out there in the woods? <laughs> yeah. But then he comes back after that, this year break, um, and eventually that leads us to the events of the movie, uh, where he has a Halloween special, where he brings on uh, this um, this supposed psychic, uh, this skeptic to kind of uh, keep the whole evening neutral, and this um, this well, it was it was a parapsychologist, I think it was. I believe so. Yeah, yeah this parapsychologist um, who uh, came became this uh, little girl's guardian, uh, who was um, at one point kind of trapped in a different cult. At least I think it was a different cult. So, the story here was that there was a cult that was worshipping a demon called Abraxas. Yeah. And they had been bringing people in for years and doing sacrifices, and there had been rumors circling around that there were children being bred as sacrifices within this community. And then they kind of had a Waco thing happen where the entire place got torched down and this little girl, Lily, was the only survivor of that. And she was 10 years old at the time. Yeah, and uh, this parapsychologist has been looking after her, basically acting as, as her guardian, um, and also kind of studying her. Um, and she has made the claim um, in this book that she released, which is called Late Night with the Devil. Was when the movie no, it's called Conversations with the Conversations Devil. Conversations with the Devil. Okay, so, sorry. Um, it's... It's close to the movie. It's title. close. Um, and it's definitely meant to kind of coincide. To kind of coincide with it. She releases a book where she makes a claim that uh, the little girl is possessed by a demon. Um, and he, and the late night, late night talk show host brings all of these guests on and then hijinks ensues. Mm -hmm. You think, could put it that I way. I could put it that way. <laughs> um, the movie is definitely a slow burn. It's a, I think definitely. Yeah. But... This is very different for me as far as found footage film goes because I'm not normally a huge fan of found footage. It's really mm. slow and quiet for most of it. There's not much going on. But because the set of this is a talk show, it's at least entertaining to watch when you're still in the quiet phase of things going on. Yeah, so the, the movie basically plays out like an episode of the talk show would normally, 
uh, with some extra like behind the scenes footage uh, that wouldn't normally be aired. But you're basically watching the talk show, an episode of the talk show for the entire movie. Um, and to, to your, uh, like, like you were saying, it, that keeps it interesting. But also, there's never really any amount of dead air on, on the uh, on, on, in the movie at all. Definitely. They, you know, obviously they come up and they say, okay, we're going to take a commercial break. And then they immediately transition to backstage footage where you get to hear the story of what's actually happening, where they're going, hey, what was that? That was kind of weird. Can you guys check on the lights? Yeah. And uh, moving <clears throat> moving into that, this is 100% uh, uh, spoiler territory. If you don't want to hear spoilers, I would recommend you shut off the, shut off the, uh, the episode right now and then go watch the movie and come back. Which I definitely recommend because that is the best way to go into this if, is if you don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. Um, so the, the, the talk show um, begins with the supposed sidekick. Um, and, uh, and they bring him on and at first he seems super gimmicky and, and, um, and then eventually he comes up to these two uh, women in the audience and, and he's like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting this name. Is, is, that, is that jive with you guys? And they're like, yeah, 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 that, that's her. Uh, that's our cousin, and or just someone related to them. Um, it was a mother and her daughter, and it was the um the other child. The other child. Okay, so it was. Uh, it was the girl's brother the girl's or brother. the mother's son. Yeah, he he had um he had taken his own life, and the um the psychic was able to to guess that, and then there was a point afterwards where they're about to cut the commercial where he just kind of starts screaming, his eyes roll in, in the back of his head, and the lights start to flicker on, on in the studio. Um, and he calls a name, which is revealed to be very important later on. Yes. But we, we still don't know exactly like where, where the name's coming from. So the name we used was Minnie. Minnie. And the talk show host kind of plays it off, and he's like, okay, so it could be Minnie, it could be Millie. And the dude screams, no, no, it's Minnie. Yeah. And um, and the dude is never okay af um, after this, by the way. He, he, ne he never really fully recovers from this. Like, and uh, it's shown in the footage that and that happens after they cut the commercial, um, where he, he kind of like says, like, I think I have to go. Uh, but the producer is on set, and, and uh, he just kind of comes up to it like, Hey, you doing alright? Let's get this man a bourbon. He'll be fine, he'll be fine. Stay on for a little bit longer. But yeah, you can see him in the background. He is sweating and shaking and coughing. Mm -hmm. And all he'll do, basically, is sit in the corner and just drink some water. And try not to interact with everyone. And chug some water. Oh, yeah. yeah. He chugged down a whole glass in like two seconds because he knew he had to talk. Yeah, like, it's... That's the point in the movie where you can tell things are not right. Yeah, because up until this point, it's kind of left to the imagination whether this guy is just, you know, doing the classic psychic, um, messing with people and just kind of picking up on, you know, oh, let's go with a general letter. I'm, I'm sure someone will give me a clue where to go from here. Or if he's actually trying to reach things. And to be fair, we're never really given a clear answer to this. No. My personal belief is that it's a bit of both. Yeah. He has the actual ability, but he does use those classic tricks to get to people. Yeah, and the movie keep, keep, uh, still keeps you guessing on that too. Yeah, they it, never really give you a complete answer. Yeah, e even the characters in the universe of the movie are, are even confused on whether or not it was an actual thing. Because uh, the the actual uh, host of the talk show goes back and talks to, produ talks to the producer. And he kind of goes up to him and he's like, Hey, uh, were those lights your idea or, or what? He goes, Oh, if you liked them, sure, they're my idea. And, and, it's, like, and it's like, okay, so... They don't. They didn't know the lights were gonna go off, so obviously they didn't plan it. Which doesn't mean that someone didn't plan it, but they're kind of confused on whether or not this was a planned event. Yeah, I think definitely they intended the last one at least to be real, mm -hmm. because you know later on we see the electricians going around in the background going, "It's not on my end. I do not see anything wrong with the lights. So this is something you did." Yeah, and yeah. fighting about it, and. As we reveal in the next section, should I continue? Go ahead, go ahead. Um, in the next section, we bring out the skeptic. And of course, the skeptic goes out and starts talking about how it's really easy to, you know, assume that someone in the audience has had a death in the family at some point in their lives and stuff like that. But the reveal comes when the talk show host um, 
tells them that his recently deceased wife, her his private nickname for her was Minnie. And that is the same name that the psychic was saying. Mm -hmm. And so it is never fully revealed whether there is any way for him to have possibly known that. Yeah. But it seemed to have affected the talk show host at the very least. Yeah. And I think we talk about this critic for a second because he is a Oh character. my god, the critic. Yeah, he's he is the asshole of the movie. Like he he um he's super condescending condescending. He's he's super uh, arrogant about everything. So this guy is an insider. He's basically kind of a stand-in for like Penn and Teller, but without the whimsy and without the appreciation for the art, because he's basically gone. Um, he was a magician, and now he's turned around, and he's just out here ruthlessly uh, um, exposing people and calling them charlatans and things like this on live TV. I actually do want to talk about that, because um, I got super excited um, when we started to interact with the critic a little bit more, because um, in the movie, it's, it's uh, revealed that, that this, um, this critic uh, he has a blank check, well not a blank check, but uh, um, a check written out for $100,000 for anyone that can uh, unquestionably prove that they have some kind of psychic ability um, or, or that they have some kind of connection with the paranormal. I got super excited when I heard that because that is a real world thing that happened. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was around in the 70s too. Uh, there was a group of critics um, that would go around, or if it was one critic, I don't know, not sure, but that was an actual thing where critics would go on talk shows, they would invite psychics, and then they would demonstrate the power, and then they would do something um, to kind of say like, okay, I've seen you do that, but here's how I think you're doing it, so I'm gonna um, put this limiter in place in, uh, 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 in place for you, and if you can still do it, then, then you've convinced me. Like, there was one specific one that I saw, I don't know what talk show it was on, but they had the psychic on who who uh, uh, claimed to have a telekinesis, um, and he did so by turning a page in a book without without touching it. It was just an open book, and he turned a page with it without touching it. And um, and the the skeptic came over and he's like, "Hey, uh, I think you're honestly just blowing on the page, and it's flipping the page." So he put like styrofoam pellets um, on, on the uh, on the table, and he said, "Do it again." And if you move the pellets, then that tells me that you're just blowing on the page, and that's what's turning it. And skeptics like, and the the, the psychics like. So my powers are based on um, electrostatic uh, uh, energies, and these are inhibiting me from uh, contacting that. So I can't really do it because of the the pellets. So like that was an actual thing that that that, that happened in the seventies. So I got super excited when when, when they uh, when they. Uh, reference that. That is so cool. Yeah, I think there was a lot of attention to detail in this where they really brought it into the real world. Like, I'm not a talk show person, but I knew the name of the guy he was up against um, when they were trying to get their ratings up. Yeah. And so it was very clear that this was meant to be set in the real world. This was meant to be as real as possible. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, the skeptic and and the um, and the talk show host and the uh, the psychic sounds like said to a joke. Um, <laughs> we're all just kind of talking for for a little bit, and then the, the after a while, the the psychic just fucking starts like having an episode, and he ends up throwing up this black goo on everything. And when that happens, it's super surprising. It just comes out of nowhere. It comes out of fucking nowhere. They're having a conversation and the, the psychic looks a little sick and then suddenly he just like collapses. Mm -hmm. And like they're, they're freaking out on the set and, and the and you know uh, the talk show host comes over he's like hey you okay we need to get this guy some help and he just projectile, projectile vomits this black goo everywhere and it, it, it just it's just a moment that kind of takes you back because at this at this point nothing on that magnitude has happened or even like is said to have been possible to happen and then we see it just happen right here in front of us but um but he does that they get the commercial uh they they rush the guy to the hospital and, and of course the uh the, the skeptic is just like oh it's just a vaudeville act thing you know it, it's, it's something you can induce yourself to do and stuff like that and basically just not buying any of it so 
at this point, like, that was surprising, but the movie's still kind of telling you, like, oh, it's something that can definitely still happen. So the audience is still kept guessing whether, still kept guessing whether or not what they're seeing is, is real. But at the very least, you're starting to see some people get at the very least concerned that the psychic is sick. Mm -hmm. That something happened and, you know, maybe it's not supernatural, but, you know, he's sick and we need to take him to the hospital here. Yeah, and even the, the talk show hosts, um, what would you, would you call it? His, his buddy? His, his co-host? Uh, yeah, the co-host. The co-host, yeah. The co-host comes, uh, comes up to him like, hey... Are we sure we should be doing this? Because because like he knows what's coming up next. He knows that um, uh, the, they're bringing on uh, the the parapsychologist and and this little girl who used to be a part of the cult. And he even kind of uh, drops the hint, drops this uh, the information that there are like restraints in the back. And you, you kind of hear that, and it's like, what what are they about to do to this little girl? What are, they, what are they about to do here? Yeah, it's definitely, it's starting to sound a little crazy, and it really does a good job of setting that first little bit of suspense in here, where you're just like, something's not right here. Mm -hmm. Something's not right, and it's getting worse by the minute. And they also made a point in the beginning of the movie to mention that this talk show host has been getting more and more edgy with what he'll do on camera because he's really trying to get those ratings up. Yeah, and and this is kind of like the the turning point that that he he's come up come up to where he's basically just inviting these what people would can in this time would consider like freaks and, and stuff like that and just kind of trying to induce uh, uh, things to happen on camera. Um, and one thing I really love, real quick, about about this movie too, is not only are, are we are we as the audience kept guessing, kept, kept guessing, but we're seeing the actual like set crew kind of freaking out about um, freaking out about everything that's going on right now. Absolutely, there's people in the background who are running back and forth and trying to fix things. You know, the makeup artists and stuff have to come out constantly and fix things. They had to change out the skeptics jacket because it got the black puke on it mm -hmm. and but there is a stage manager behind the scenes who's just like keep rolling with it you guys are doing amazing let's keep going yeah and both the the, the, the talk show host and his producer are like hearing none of it basically mm -hmm. because all they're concerned about is the ratings yeah at the very least the talk show host seems a little concerned at times mm -hmm. like he's still human yeah. you know the stage manager is just like, that was beautiful. I don't know where he pulled that out from. Let's keep going. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's like, oh, um, we'll check in the ratings. We're getting calls in. And and, uh, and it's great because people were upset at us. But that means we're getting publicity. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually they bring out the, the parapsychologist and his little girl. And the second the little girl steps on stage, you know something's not right with her. The camera glitches a little bit yeah. as well. Not only does the camera glitch, but the second she gets on stage, she constantly stares at a camera. She she stares directly into uh, into a camera that's on set, and you, you kind of can't tell if it's because she's she's nervous or if there's something not right. That's the thing, though, is that she doesn't seem nervous. She seems perfectly calm. And she, it seems like she knows exactly what she's doing in each moment. And that's why it's so unsettling. Because it's not a very human reaction to being put on a stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you look at all of the other people on stage and looking at each other, they're talking at each other, they're looking at the audience, but not a single one of them is usually staring directly at the camera unless they're addressing, you know, the, the audience, at the people watching at home. But she gets on, on stage and the second she does, like I said, stares directly at a camera and does not break eye contact with it. And she's just sitting there smiling. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing too, no matter what's happening on stage, she is smiling. Which... I've always said that the best way to unnerve an audience or to make something creepy is to have it be 90% normal and 10% off. And that is a beautiful mark that they hit in this movie. Mm -hmm. I think that they have it's done that perfectly well. Where they do just enough stuff that's off in the beginning to unnerve you. Mm -hmm. 
but not enough to make it obvious that something huge is happening. They keep you guessing with it. Yeah, you always get this feeling that something is wrong, but you can't quite put your finger on it. And even if you can put your finger on it, you have people coming in and saying, well, he's going to the hospital, he's just sick right now. Yeah. Or something to that effect. Yeah. Something to add rationale to it. Mm -hmm. So they introduce um, the, the parapsychologist and the little girl, and they start talking about the parapsychologist's book. Um, and of course, the, the, the skeptic is cutting in every now and then with his, with his, um, with his smart ass remarks. This is where he starts really playing the asshole role. Yeah. And, uh, and they cut to commercial, um, and the parapsychologist comes up to the, 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 the talk show host, and you can kind of tell that they, they got a, a thing going on. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're, you can definitely tell that um, that they have some kind of uh, relationship that goes pretty on professional behind the scenes. They're standing very close to each other. They've had conversations about this stuff in the past, you know. They're looking each other right in the eyes. Yeah. Um, and uh, the parapsychologist comes up to the talk show host and she's just like, Hey, uh, I don't think we should go forward with this. She, uh, she says that, I think, what was the little girl's name again? Lily. Lily, that's what I thought it was. Um, I remember because it's always suggestive when you have a girl that's supposedly yeah. possessed by a demon yeah. with the name Lily. <laughs> uh, but, she, but she's like, hey, I don't think this is, this is, we should do this. Lily isn't ready for this. Basically saying, like, I know I've agreed to come on the, talk, uh, on the show and talk about this, but I don't think that Lily is ready for this. Um, and right away, because... Uh, because again, like nothing really, really seemed the matter um, with Lily when she walked on stage, other than you know her staring at the camera. So it's like, well, what do you mean she's not ready for this? What, what exactly is going on here? Um, and uh, and and the talk show host Jack just kind of uh, says to her, just kind of convinces her, not really convinces her, but just kind of brushes her off to the point where they come back on the air and he can get her on camera where she can't really refuse. Yeah, they get back on camera and he's like, okay, so coming up next, we're going to have a demonstration of this, right? Yeah. And the parapsychologist is like, no, 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 I told you that we're not ready for this. I don't think it's a good idea. And Lily straight up looks over and says, I can do it. It's, it's not fine. a problem. It's fine. Why can't we do it? Yep. And so the parapsychologist just gets completely blown to the side and she has to agree to it mm -hmm. because it's on camera and the whole audience is cheering. Yep. And there was a little point uh, before that I wanted to talk to you before they, <laughs> they came back on air. Um, it's, it's kind of a kind of a blink, you'll miss it sort of thing. Um, the uh, uh, Jack crosses in front of, uh, of the parapsychologist and Lily to talk to, I think it was the, the makeup artist. Um, and uh, he says something about, uh, about like, hey, the makeup artist will, will make you guys beautiful or, or pretty or whatever. And Lily turns to him and says, don't you think I'm already pretty, but not in her voice. Yeah. Like, I definitely caught the line. I didn't catch that it was off, but I did get an off feeling from it. Yeah, like, it was very clearly not in her voice. And you can see Jack kind of realize that, too, but he just kind of, like, brushes past it. Doesn't you know, reassures wrong. her, I think you're very beautiful and stuff like that. You know, all the charm in the world. Yep. And they just move on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that that's a fantastic moment because again, it is a blink and you'll miss a moment. Or like for you, we even heard it, but didn't really, really hear what was wrong with it. That's the thing is that you either hear it and you know that that's wrong, or you don't hear it and your subconscious says, "Hey, something's wrong." Something was off with what she just said right there. Yes. This this girl, by the way, the actress is fucking amazing. Yes. She is so good with her delivery in every single one of these moments the way she just sits so perfectly still her look when she's smiling at the camera the way she says every single thing to the point where you know something is off and you can't tell if it's just because she's a, sh a, sh a sheltered child of a cult or if something is really wrong here yeah and to be very clear she's very sweet absolutely a little too sweet yes and that's yeah, the she thing even She's a 13-year-old girl, and she comes out, and she's wearing, like, these really, this cute overall dress, and, like, t um, stockings, and the cute little shoes. She's dressed like a little kid. Yeah. And that's definitely the way that she seems. The way they portray her is very young. 
where she's supposed to be more childlike than she should be at her age. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, but so yeah, they, they, they come back uh, on air and uh, and when we come back, uh, they have these two chairs set up, they put Lily in these restraints um, and uh, and uh, the parapsychologist is sitting across from her and then um, basically kind of talks her into letting um, the, de the supposed demon that uh, is inhabiting her body, or sometimes inhabits her body, called Mr. Riggles. Which is just a fun name for a demon. Oh my god, can I just say, the best <laughs> line in this whole thing is, he goes, Okay, so I hear that you call this thing Mr. Riggles. Why is that? She says, well, he kind of wriggles into my brain, and then he wriggles out. Yeah. <laughs> and oh my god, is that the perfect innocent child and horrifically yes. terrifying thing to say? Yes, because like it's very innocent when she delivers the line, but like... It once you get past what she just said and you think about it for a second, it's like, oh shit, what, is, what do you mean by that? Yeah, it is horrifying to <laughs> even consider that, especially for those of us who have been playing Baldur's Gate and are already dealing with the, <laughs> the trauma of the freaking... Uh, the little worms. The worms. In his ears. So, uh, she, she starts uh, talking her into letting Mr. Riggles... Uh, 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 to letting him, letting him in so she, so she can talk to him. Um, and uh, at the, there's one point where it kind of looks like she passes out the chair. So the whole setup for this, let me set the scene. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. They've dimmed all the lights. The only two people who are in focus are the parapsychologist and Lily. They're sitting in two chairs facing each other and Lily has her hands strapped down to the chair so she can't move. Mm -hmm. And she seems perfectly normal until they start. Yep. They start, and then you can tell uh, Lily definitely ex uh, expresses some discomfort. And then after a while, she kind of passes out a little bit. And her hair is covering her face at that point, so you can't really see her face. Um, and then eventually we hear this kind of deep voice come from her. So they do a really wonderful thing here where I really think what they did was they did Lily's natural voice and the yes. deeper voice at the same time. Yes, they, they, they layer it on top of it. So, so it's like, which is impossible for a human to do. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, one singular human. Um, and then she kind of looks up and then uh, on her face it kind of looks like she's got some, some scarring on her face. And yeah, her wounds. face is completely pale. It looks different. She's got cuts that weren't there before and different marks, and the way she acts is completely different, too. Yeah, and I think it's important to note, uh, her face does not look grotesque. It, like, it, her face is not hard to look at, it just looks off. Yeah, it looks different enough that you sit there and you go, oh, that's not Lily. Yeah, like, 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 at, at no point is it like, oh, uh, that's gore. Like, it's, it, it, she, she's... It's... It almost looks like a dead person with scars on their face, or mm -hmm. cuts on their face that have been cleaned up, and there's no red, there's no blood or gore or anything, but there's a wound, and it just looks like a mark in the skin, kind of. Yeah, and I think that was a fantastic choice. Absolutely. Cause, cause it, it it feeds into that oh something isn't right here, um, and and it's subtle enough that you kind of wonder if she's always looked like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they're they're having this back and forth. The uh, the uh, Mr. Riggles through Lily is now saying some very risque things. Oh, Mr. Riggles was so confused at first. It was really funny. He's like, Where am I? Where am I? What have you done to me? <laughs> And, um, and, you know, uh, uh, of course, in natural, like, exorcism fashion, uh, Mr. Riggles kind of devolves into, into saying, like, something really, really, uh, again, risque and rude. And also deeply personal to the people involved. Deeply, deeply personal. Uh, uh, he starts talking about, like, people's personal lives and things that you can, you can definitely tell were never publicly stated. And one of the most interesting things that's said in this section is, ah, to the TV show host, Jack. I know you. I met you in the woods. Good to see you again, Good Jack. to see you again. Yeah, so the, uh, it looks like um, that, that Jack has seen this entity before. 
or, yeah, or at least and, interacted with it at some point. And he reacts to it, so I think on some level he knows what it's talking about. He knows about. exactly what he's, what, he's, what, uh, what he's talking about. And um, it, it begins to, to get too much for the parapsychologist, and she ends up slapping Lily. Um, and it seems at first to kind of take her out of it because Lily kind of says, like, why would you do that? You know I can't. In Lily's voice, not with the deep voice, just in Lily's voice. Why would you do that? You, um, you know I can't control it. And then she goes to reach for her to kind of console her, and then she fucking snaps at her. Yeah, like she's gonna bite her hand off. Yeah, and her face was not okay at that point. No. Like you don't, you don't see it. Like you don't get a get to get a uh, get to get a good look at it because it kind of happens in a second and they cut away from it. Um, but you can tell in a moment that her her face is not human in that moment. And you can see a lot more teeth than you would see on a normal human. Yes, very, very much so. And and th throughout this, the, the, the camera's glitching a little bit as well, mm -hmm. which will come into play later. Um, and the lights start going crazy, and then eventually the chair levitates. Levitates like four feet off the ground. Mm-hmm. And of course, there's screaming, stuff is going on, the electricity's freaking out. And then they manage to pull her down and suddenly it all just stops. Lily is back like nothing ever happened. The lights turn back on and they're just like, well, we're going to cut to commercial break. Yeah, they cut to commercial break real far. Break. And an interesting thing that I noted at this point that really feels like a turning point for the film is they can't get Lily out of the restraints when they're off camera. Yeah, when they're off camera, they're having some difficulty get, uh, getting her out of the restraints. They literally have to use, they had a couple of props there from the cult way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And so they have this sacrificial dagger. And so what ends up happening is Jack has to use the sacrificial dagger to cut Lily out of the restraints because they can't get them off. And that feels so symbolic. And you're sitting there like, something's wrong, something's wrong, that's not supposed to happen. And there was a little point after that as well, when they when they uh, are ready to go back on, on the air, um, which, we'll, which we're kind of skipping over something, but we'll come back and talk about it, um, where he goes to take his seat again, and someone has to remind him, hey Jack, the dagger. Which I think was a nice little thing because it kind of kind of lets you know that this dagger has maybe a little more significance than they're letting on to. There's a lot of small details in here, and I'm sure you go through it again, you'll see something completely different. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of things we missed. So I think I think at this point is where we have Jack go backstage at some point, mm -hmm. and he talks to his stage manager, and he says, "The psychic's dead." Yep. The psychic went to the hospital and hemorrhaged, and he's dead. Mm -hmm. The psychic is is gone. He 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 like when you hear that, it's like oh shit. So what he went through was real. Yeah, something very serious happened. Something very and serious happened. I believe that um, it was an interesting for me because I believe I've heard before that when you start vomiting up something black, that means that you're vo that you're vomiting blood. Mm -hmm from your stomach yeah and you are not supposed to do that that is a no. huge warning sign that you need to go to the er immediately there should not be blood in your stomach and so it just very like immediately it grounds it so much that not just did something horrible happen but this was a actual like it was like he got pulled apart from the inside that's the visual that i got watching this yeah because something so bad happened that he ended up just bleeding to death yeah and it's also at this point where we get a couple of different moments. Uh, directly after uh, everything happens with Lily and they come to commercial, he goes up to the parapsychologist and it looks like you get the feeling he's about to, you know, apologize for putting Lily through this. But, and, and you kind of hope he's going for that too, that this kind of has, has wicked, wicked, woken him up and be like, hey, this wasn't okay, I shouldn't have done this. But then he says, we need to get you guys back on here as soon as we can. Yeah, you guys are going to have to come back again. We can make this like a regular thing. We can make this a regular segment with Lily. And, and at that moment, at that moment, you know Jack is, is completely gone. He's he's completely wrapped up in in uh, the ratings and possibly in the fact that this is going to be a huge show for him. Mm -hmm. And we get another thing where uh, his co-host has come up to him and said, Hey, something that this isn't right. We need to stop this. Um, that there's, you're messing with things here that you don't understand and we need to stop now. 
And so th there's multiple people going over to Jack and telling him, hey, this isn't right. We need to stop. And yeah. Jack isn't hearing it. And it's important to see at this point because we can all tell this isn't supposed to be happening. No. This isn't smoke and mirrors. Mm -mm. This is something freaky is happening and no one understands it. Yeah. And we start to come uh, back on air and we learn that there it, that um, before we go back on air, uh, we learn that there's that the studio is getting a bunch of calls about people who are upset by what they're seeing. Uh, when we go back on air, we, we see a bunch of people in the live audience leaving. Um, and uh, and Jack lets the audience know that three of their cast members had left the building because they didn't, they couldn't handle what they were seeing. So things are di are devolving very very quickly, um, and people aren't happy with what they're seeing. But they're continuing on, and they there was even a moment. Uh, so it, before this all starts, and and um, and Jack is introducing the show for the night. Uh, he gives the you know the show's lineup, and there was supposed to be a musical performance that night. Um, and uh, and once we get into this point in the movie, he's like, "Well, we were supposed to have this lady on, but I think we're gonna have to ask her back for another time, and we we need to talk about this and what what has happened here." Mm -hmm. And it's at this point that the skeptic kind of chimes in. He's like, "I know what she's done, and it's not paranormal, and I can prove it." Uh, so this is where it gets really interesting because mm -hmm. you know to the point to this point it's kind of grounded you can see what's happening but then this guy comes up and he says i can show you exactly what's happening so he sits down in the same chairs him sitting across from the co-host and he pulls out of course the classic pocket watch and makes it do the hypnotic spin mm -hmm. and he has the cameras look directly at it, asks everyone to look in very closely. And then he starts talking to the co-host. And he says to the co-host, well, how are you feeling? And the co-host says, I'm really hot right now. It's really sweaty in here. Mm -hmm. And so he, he pulls off his jacket and he's sitting there and he's just like loosening his tie a little. And then um, the... Skeptic is like, well, what are you doing right now? And the co-host says, I'm just really itchy. And he starts pulling at his tie and opening up his shirt a little bit and itching. And then the co-host says, hey, you've got a little cut on the side of your neck. And we see this is like a gash. Yeah, it's not a little cut. And the, the co-host says, oh yeah, I cut myself shaving earlier today. And you're like, no, that's no. not what happened no, there. No, that is a large cut. That is an injury. And they go, what is that? And he pulls a worm out of this wound. And real quick, it's established before they start that the co-host has a fear of worms. Yes. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> but yes, that was part of this scene. He pulls a worm out and he's freaking out. And he starts opening up his shirt and then he goes and he pulls at his stomach with his hands and rips it open to reveal that his guts have turned to worms. Mm -hmm. He's freaking out and screaming and the skeptic backs up and he keeps trying to break him out of the hypnosis. And then the guy goes and walks over and this giant worm starts coming out of his eye. And then suddenly the skeptic cuts it off and everything goes back to normal. Like none of it ever happened. And boy, can I say like what an amazing little moment. Because at that point... You have seen no gore in in, in this movie at all. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's no there's nothing there's no explicit gore, gore. There's no explicit like blood even like like there's not even really a nick on anyone. Sure, like Lily has some like wounds on her face when she when she comes becomes possessed, but they're not bleeding or anything like that. They're nothing serious. This man pulls apart his fucking stomach and worms pull out, uh, uh, start falling out. It was horrifying. It was, it was like, it was like, wow, where the fuck did that come from? And again, everything so far has been at the very least expected. Mm -hmm. We expected something to go wrong with Lily. When we got that first warning earlier, we knew that something was going to happen. This came out of absolute nowhere. Nowhere. Absolutely. Coming from the guy who is like, oh yeah, it's not real. Yeah. So, the follow-up to this. 
everyone's freaking out and they're like, how can you be saying that's not real? Mm -hmm. And so the skeptic says, okay, let's play back the video we just filmed. Mm -hmm. And they play it back and they realize that none of it happened. Yeah. The entire thing was the skeptic quietly telling them what was going to happen and the co-host reacting. He had hypnotized the entire audience into seeing that. That's what the implication is there. Yeah, and like and like uh, like Ash said that they played back the tape and um, none of that happened at all. Like like he was just kind of pantomiming through it, and and we we see the the skeptic kind of talking him through it. Like you have a, you feel itchy. Oh yeah, I feel itchy. You got a cut on on, on your on your uh, on your neck. Oh yeah, I cut myself shaving. You pull something out, it's a worm. Oh, it's a worm! So like, um, at, at this point, you don't know whether what happened with Lily is real or not, or if it was like the skeptic is saying, and uh, the, par the parapsychologist has just hypnotized everyone. So I, I wanna take a moment here to kind of go off a little bit because um, from my Psych 101 education, <laughs> that is not how hypnosis works. No, no, not the slightest. Hypnosis does work, but you have to have someone who is willing. Mm -hmm. It's all about stimulation. You mm -hmm. overstimulate someone to the point where they kind of dissociate from themselves. And I'm sure there's some crazy stuff that you could do there, but I don't think there is any point where I would say that you could definitely hypnotize a whole room of people. I don't think you can get someone to hallucinate. Yeah, I just... think I think it was just a little much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... But for the purposes of our movie. For the purposes of the movie, you can kind of uh, turn a blind eye to it and just accept it as this is something that Skeptic has done. Um, and... Uh, Lily at this point says, "Well, how about we we play back what happened to me, and then we'll see if uh, if it was real or not, or if that's actually what happened." And at this point, the parapsychologist looks at the host and says, "No, no, we are leaving right now. We are not doing this." Mm -hmm. But the host they doesn't do care it anyway. They do, they do it anyway. The host doesn't care. That they, they, uh, they pull up Lily's uh, uh, exorcism moment. And they start going through it, and we can see uh, the moment when the moment when Lily uh, looks up and reveals that her face um, has changed. That is on camera. And the skeptic starts walking back and going, "No, no, that's the, there's there must gotta be, be some other explanation for this." Yeah, yeah. And um, when they're watching it, they um, they witness the glitches that we were watch that we were witnessing before uh, when we were first watching the scene. Yeah, it is important to know that at the beginning of the movie they explained to us that everything that was seen that we are seeing was how it was presented on live tv and this um you know supposed event yeah and obviously as uh, as people uh on camera presenting uh, a talk show they would see the glitches when they're as they were happening mm -hmm. so they see the glitches when they're when they're uh, uh watching the, the tape back and I think that there was definitely a glitch that um, that they kind of passed by because I remember um, when I was looking at this uh, um, at the glitch when when it was happening, it kind of looked like a face that popped up, and I was waiting for the face. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but they don't really see that. The, 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 um, they're they're going through it kind of like frame by frame, and uh, and we're seeing like a lot of static. And there was at one point uh, where we see a figure standing behind Jack. The talk, the talk show host. And he just looks at that camera and he just says in the saddest voice imaginable, Minnie? Mm -hmm. And there's a little there's a, there's a little moment when we cut back to the the, the normal uh, camera, not the footage from before, where uh, we, we get a, a, um, a shot of Jack saying Minnie and we see a hand on his shoulder. So at this point, all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. The skeptic starts going, I knew it, you planned this whole thing, that's why it looks like this, you pre-recorded this, and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. He's freaking out. Yeah. Basically trying to cope. That, like, that, like, inhaling a tremendous amounts of copium. And then on the other side, something starts happening to Lily. Mm -hmm. Something starts happening to Lily. She is not doing well. Uh, she starts making a bunch of noises. She 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 definitely looks very uncomfortable. Um, and then 
I forget exactly what happens to that point. Do you remember? Um, it starts cackling. Oh yeah, she And then she cackling. starts levitating, mm -hmm. and then she pulls the energy from the TV screen into her hand, and then sends it out into the electrical stuff in the sky. Like, she's a conduit. This is like Avatar The Last Airbender yeah. <laughs> redirecting lightning type stuff. And her face lights up. People are freaking out. The skeptic is still insisting that this is a trick somehow. And then eventually her, her head splits in two. At this point, the parapsychologist tries to get her down, tries to calm her down and wake Lily up. Mm -hmm. And Lily snaps her neck. Yep. Mm -hmm. just, just like looks at her and snaps her neck. No, no. She, um, no, that's not no. what happens. That's not no, what happens. No, you're right. Um, the the, the co-host uh, pulls out his cross and starts saying the power of Christ compels you. And she looks at him and snaps his neck. With a look. With a look. Um, and uh, she looks over at the parapsychologist who takes out this amulet that she has, which she pulled out earlier, we forgot to mention. Um, the, the way she's able to get her down from the uh, from being possessed earlier um, was uh, she pulled out this amulet and started uh, sort of chanting something. She does the same thing, pulls out the amulet, points at her, starts to chant the very same thing, um, and then Lily looks at her and then her necklace starts to get pulled back and starts to choke her. It literally chokes her so hard it cuts through yeah. her skin. It and slits starts her neck. Bleeding. It slits her neck. Um, and. Uh, we cut back to over to the skeptic who is now uh he's lost all hope he, he can't explain anything that's going on right now because he realizes that things are fucked he so jack is backing off he's running away trying to get out the door yeah and the skeptic is cowering and he just reaches into his jacket and pulls out the blank check yeah. <laughs> which is honestly kind of a hilarious moment because like i'm look i'm looking at that and i'm like oh they're gonna do a thing where he's a hypocrite he's gonna pull out a cross or something like that but no he pulls out the fucking check um, and the, and the, the check kind of disintegrates and he goes oh fuck and he starts melting yeah so then we cut back to jack Things get really weird from here. Yes, yes. It gets kind of hard to explain from here. It gets really psychedelic. Mm -hmm. We see Jack getting thrown into different scenes that we saw earlier in the documentary style intro, where he's just on set during a skit that he did once, and everyone else is acting like they're in the middle of it, and he's sitting and he's like, where am I? Where, what, what's happening here? And he's like pulling off his disguise, and everyone's like, ha you're funny, Jack. Let's mm -hmm. keep going. He starts going through different scenes of his life, and then suddenly he ends up in a room with his wife. And something I want to mention real quick. Go ahead. Um, the entire movie is shot in a four by three aspect ratio, like an old TV aspect ratio. Um, after this happens and Jack starts going through these uh, previous scenes that we get from before in the documentary, it switches to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And the quality significantly increases. Mm -hmm. It's, it's in like a modern quality. Yeah. So this new modern quality, clearly something is off. He's going through all these different scenes and it's kind of rapid fire. They go through, you see little flashes of like the hypnotic symbol from earlier and stuff like that. And then he's in a room with his wife. His wife is very sick. Clearly this is when she was dying of cancer mm -hmm. and she's in the bed and he goes to sit down with her and she says, something to the effect of you knew that this was going to happen you um you did it so that you could be successful and this is the cost and, and jack's just kind of sitting there distraught he's like i didn't know that this exact thing would happen and basically saying like it, it got out of hand so at this point the implication is the secret gentleman's club out in the woods was doing real rituals and he essentially sold his soul for success on tv mm -hmm. and what the cost was was his wife getting cancer yeah and we, we saw um uh i think it, this was before it um where uh, we got a little scene where it kind of um they kind of like uh portrayed how the ritual went in the um in the woods with yes his, because uh there's a symbolism that, uh, established with this uh, with this gentleman's club earlier in the movie, uh, with this person wearing an owl like like a like a mask, and then that we see that exact thing uh, later on with this person wearing an owl mask, and he like kind of kneels before them, and then we get that scene with uh, with his wife, 
and uh, she basically tells him, you know what to do now. Um, and in that moment, right next to the, to the bedstand, um, they have the dagger. So it is heavily implied that this TV show host killed his own wife so that she would no longer be suffering from the effects of her cancer. Yeah, because she asked him to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so he agrees. He goes and he grabs the knife and he stabs her in the stomach. Yeah, a very important distinction. It's the same dagger that they, that they had for the ritual um, that they were talking about beforehand. The same dagger that was used to cut Lily out of her restraints. Exactly. Um, and in the, the moment that we get when, uh, when Jack stabbed his wife, it cuts um, after he freaks out for a second back to that night in the talk show, and it's revealed that he actually stabbed Lily. So, Jack is standing there, hand on this dagger, having stabbed and killed Lily. The entire studio is in disarray. People have run from the place. <laughs> There's dead bodies all over. And he's sitting there, and he just goes... What? Mm -hmm. And he's looking around and he's so confused. And you can hear sirens going off in the background. Mm -hmm. And it's just quiet. Yep. At this point, it's very heavily implied that he is the only one here in the studio. He's the only one left. The only one left. And then, we end. That's it. It is absolutely wild. There are so many little details going on throughout the whole thing, but I think it is absolutely incredible. It's, it's a fantastic movie, and something to, to note, um, there is a little bit of controversy with this movie because they do use AI, AI art in some of it. Um, they, they have the, these, uh, these little uh, uh, Cards they put up like a, like a ruby white back sort of sort of cards, um, and those were, were made with AI generated. Oh, is that where that came in? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I can kind of see that. Yeah, and um, I would say it doesn't really pull me out of the movie uh, seeing those. But we do need to come out and say that it is not okay to not buy artists no. because you can make AI art yeah. that is not real art. I think because of the small scale of this, I can still find it forgivable for such a good film. Yeah. But we do need to come out and say that this is not something you should be doing. It is not okay. No, no. And I fully, uh, I fully understand if nobody wants to go see this this movie because there is AI art in it. We have a friend who um, has a degree in in uh, in, in art and, and illustration. And she refuses to see this movie because there, there's an AI art in it, and I fully understand that decision. Yeah, and we fully support that. Mm -hmm. It is a fantastic movie, and they made a bad choice. Yes, yes. Which is unfortunate. Yes. Um, but I would say, if you don't mind the AI art, it is definitely worth a watch. Um, and Because we definitely enjoyed it. It was incredible. You know, it was so entertaining through the whole thing. They've got a lot of fun going on. They've got the jokes going on throughout the whole thing because the whole thing is set up to be a talk show. It's entertaining. It's funny to watch. The characters are interesting to watch and there's so much nuance there. And the slow buildup really brings the impact. And in the end, even though it's not the goriest movie out there, it's not the most horrifying, the impact of it is still with me this morning after we watched it the night before. It just hit me hard at the end mm. and it's just incredible. Fantastic, fantastic film. But of course, question is, was it really scary? Yes. 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 I think the fact how grounded it was, I think that this very much falls into the category of found footage films. Mm -hmm. uh, the greats this is Blair Witch. Yes. It felt real. Yes, it felt it felt very real and it was very, very well done. To the point where when they got to the ridiculous gore and stuff, we were um, we weren't sure what was happening because mm -hmm. it felt so out of place. Yep. And, and that and that did nothing but uh, but uh it was nothing but a strength for the movie. Absolutely. It was they, nothing but a strength. For they knew exactly what they were doing and they played their hands so well. Um and a uh, funny side note, the beginning of this movie, there are like 
10 different production studios that have their name on this movie. <laughs> and I understand it now because everyone wants a piece of the pie. Yeah. Also, can I just say thank you to Shudder for helping to produce such amazing horror movies. We love you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I gotta say, it was a little annoying with the, with those uh, we <laughs> with those studios. We were holding to that Family Guy yeah. joke of, okay, yeah. when's the actual <laughs> movie gonna start? Yeah, like the, there were so many fucking like uh, like little trailers for 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 production studios. There, like, like you said, I think there were like ten of them. There were like ten of them. There were so yeah. many. And they, they didn't do the 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 normal thing where they just kind of like show the logo for a second and then move on. They played the full fucking like animation that they have for these studios. And like, like, and it was just, it was just kind of ridiculous. Um, but once we got into the movie, it was fine. Yeah, it was just funny because we were sitting there before the movie even started, laughing, going, "Oh, oh, is this it? Is this it? <laughs> Why are there more?" Edging, we're edging us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead and go see it if you don't want to see it because they aren't totally understand. And uh, we, uh, is there anything else you want to say? Um, I believe we. You to rate the film? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, five out of five. Five out of five for me, too. Five out of five. It was fantastic. A wonderful horror movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is it for us. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.